new gear day. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I have here the ASCAR ACL 200 uh, lens slash telescope. Future Max here. So I was hoping to do a first light video for the new lens, but it's been about three weeks since I got the lens and did the unboxing. Uh, and it's just, you don't buy things, people. This has been it for the last three weeks. Just rain, constantly. Clouds on a good day, rain on a bad day. So I'll, I'll upload uh, a first light video when I can, but for now I just figured I'd get this out and uh, I'll link that video here uh, once it's out. So this is something that I've been wanting for quite a while. I did a ton of research, looked at lots and lots of different options because there are quite a lot of options uh, on the market right now for these uh, wide field, fast kind of lens slash telescope uh, style refractors. And the main thing I was doing was using Stellarium to figure out the field of view that I would get with my current camera and possibly potential uh, future cameras that I might get down the line. And so as you can see, there's quite a few objects that just fit in really nicely, uh, particularly here in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, the Carina Nebula, both the large and small Magellanic clouds fit really well. Uh, the Rofuji cloud complex, the Orion complex, the Witch Head Nebula, and the Blue Horsehead Nebula. There's just so many uh, objects, the list goes on, uh, that fit really, really well with everything I have. And then the other thing that I really was excited for about this is not needing a field flattener, not really having to worry about back focus and things like that, um, which with my uh, EvoStar 72, I always have to crop in quite a bit. I do have, uh, even with that field flattener, uh, I do have back focus problems. Uh, and I've even played with that to, to no avail. So uh, I like the idea of, uh, you know, a quadruplet or a quintuplet in this case uh, that can just make everything nice and flat without any extra effort. Without any further ado, let's, uh, let's get to why we're all here. Let's open this bad boy up. So the idea of this is that it's going to go predominantly on my Star Adventurer Pro and just be uh, a really good portable setup that I can take with me on the road and should all hopefully fit in one case. Alrighty. That's what we're greeted with. Nothing else in there, nicely packed. Lots of foam. Okay, we got some tape, yep. Ascar on the tape. One more. Oh, <laughs> that's a tight seal. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Instructions and uh, an Allen key. Don't need that. More packaging. Alrighty, so this is going to be the dovetail rail for the top of the telescope so that can hold guide scope or an ASI air or something of that nature. And then the main event comes in a really nice protective bag. Move those out of the way. a nice bag actually little handle as well it's uh feels pretty padded that's what we like so the styrofoam i'll probably keep that in there oh yeah so at this point my microphone dropped out just momentarily but basically this is a lot heavier than i was anticipating I uh, was a little bit worried that the Star Adventure might not be able to handle it, uh, but looking at the specs, it's about two kilograms, which is 
pretty much exactly what my Skywatcher uh, Evo Star 72 ED weighs, uh, and that's at a 350 millimeter focal length, whereas this is at 200 millimeters. So I think this will be totally fine. I'm not too worried about it at all. Um, but I will say this is a solid hunk of glass. It is a lot sturdier uh, and more substantial than I was anticipating. Uh, really, really impressed with it. And so the lens shade actually comes right off as well, which is great for storage. Uh, if you're going to put it in a small case or something like that, that can be very handy. Uh, but it does fit in the bag with the lens shade on. Beautiful. So, as car at the top, 200 millimeters, one to four APO. I'm exactly sure what that means. Maybe something to do the, with the fact that it's F4, one to four. Uh, Astro camera lens and then the 82 millimeter diameter or aperture in this case. Uh, so we're going to have the the aperture dial uh, on top here. So I'll only be using this at f4, uh, but you do have the option, which is nice for daytime use if I ever want to do that. So right now it's set at 5.6. Um, you can see as I turn the dial, you can see the blades opening and closing. Nice little touch on the dovetail rail as well. A couple of screws to put it in. There we are. And then you got these two to attach whatever you like to uh, to the dovetail rail, which right now I don't have, but something is coming soon. Hint, hint. I'll just pop these in there for now. So it looks a bit more realistic. There we are. Hey, so another future Max here. Yes, it's still raining. Uh, it turns out when I was filming the earlier part of this, I wasn't filming when I was showing two of my favorite parts about this uh, lens. So number one is this screw right here, which when you loosen it, allows you to rotate the collar completely, which is really good for framing up your, uh, you know, your shots. Uh, so that's really, really handy, number one. And then number two is that this whole back part of the cell just screws right off. So it allows you to screw a two inch filter directly into the, uh, the image train. So, oops, let's pop that in there and screw it in. And that sits nicely in there and then you can screw this whole cell back on and now you've got your light pollution filter directly in there. It's not obviously going to be good if you're changing filters all night, but if you're just using that one light pollution style filter, uh, it's, that's a godsend. There's not too many lenses or telescopes out there that have that kind of capability built into them. So I uh, really, really like that. All right, back to it. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, I'm just going to attach my camera to it and uh, stick it on the Star Adventurer, see how it all looks and give you a look. And we're back about a week later. Uh, so an issue that uh, did not occur to me at the time, although it was written everywhere, is that uh, I have a regular M42 thread for my T-ring, but uh, what you actually need for this, because it's really designed for full frame cameras, is an M48. So I've gone out and bought myself one of those. Looks very similar, fits the camera just the same, just a little bit wider opening at the front here. So, with that in mind, I'll just pop this, uh, pop this new adapter in here. Screw 
screw this off. All right, so now it's on secure. I can just unlock the rotator and just put it into place. Something like that for now. And then, it's gonna be a bit of trial and error. So that, so this looks about halfway extended. Honestly, the whole thing doesn't extend that much when you change the focus, so I doubt it's gonna make too much difference, but let's see if we can get this thing balanced. So this actually looks pretty good. The fact that it, it's kind of balanced on this side anywhere really nicely, but then not quite, if I put it on that side, it doesn't sit perfectly. To me, that says that the declination is off. So in order to get the balance, I found that uh, you wanna use the hole that's closest to the front of the lens. Um, it's not perfect, it really depends on the orientation of the camera if you're using a DSLR. Um, because if you look, if I rotate this, because there's so much more weight on this side of the camera, you know, if I point that vertical, then all of a sudden it bounces really nicely, but as soon as I, you know, point it that way, then all of a sudden it throws the weight off. So, you know, bounce is never gonna be exactly perfect with, with this system. Um, but I think you'll be fine. As long as you just err on the east side heavy option, you should be just fine. Um, but you can see here, it's really good on that side. It's really good on that side. You know, it holds pretty steady in most positions. Truthfully, it's probably, you know, pushing the limits of what the Star Adventurer can do, but I, I'm pretty confident, especially uh, if and when I get auto guiding going up top here, which is really gonna put it at its absolute weight limit. But um, I think uh, from what I've seen, it should be, should be just fine. All right, so I thought I'd check the weight on this thing. So let's turn this thing on. So with everything on there, camera and all. What do we got? It's about 2.8 kilos. So that's a little over half the payload limit of the Star Adventure. So really that should be fine, especially if we take this off here. Let's do that. So if we're auto guiding, I'll use that. But if not, then it's just kind of useless weight. And that should get us to about two and a half kilos, I'm guessing. This thing only weighs about 170 grams, so it's probably not hurting you too much, but look, it doesn't hurt to get rid of it. Also brings the center of gravity of the whole system slightly closer to the mount, which is always a good thing too. Um, and then if I remove this whole thing, we want a weight of just the lens. So just the lens with the lens hood on, looking at 1.85. So we're probably pushing the limits of what the Star Adventure is really capable of, but I think it can handle it. It holds basically the same weight with my EvoStar 72, and that's at about 350 millimeters after the focal reducer. So at 200 millimeters, I really think this should have no problem. It's also shorter, which means that it has a smaller moment arm, uh, which uh, is kind of a, an under, uh, just kind of an underestimated and perhaps unknown aspect of balancing. Uh, it's not just about, you know, how much the thing weighs, and it's not also just about the center of gravity, it's about how the weight is distributed, and the, the further from the center of gravity that weight exists, the harder it is for the mount to basically control, and you're gonna have more, uh, more backlash and more, you know, and you're gonna have more other errors that the mount is not really able to handle. So just the fact that it's shorter and that amount of weight is in a you know tighter area or tighter volume should actually be uh, a positive as well as the fact that it's a, a shorter focal length. So anyway, I will do some shooting once the full moon is gone, which the full moon is in a couple of days, so I obviously haven't used this just yet. 
uh, but I will report back once we get some clear skies and some uh, unmooned skies. And uh, until then guys, uh, I will see you next time.